Hello and welcome back to another Max MSP tutorial. My name is Andrew Robinson and we are continuing our beginner into Max MSP intro series. And today we're going to talk about a concept that is pretty important for doing a lot of versatile stuff in Max MSP and that concept is called Booleans. If you are new to computer programming, you may have heard the term Boolean before, but you don't know what it is. And I'm going to tell you what it is. And it's actually quite simple. A Boolean is something that is either a true or false value. It is a variable that has either a true or false state. And this comes from classical computer programming. If we real quick look at this statement, if x is greater than or equal to 50, then uh, return true. This is a Boolean statement. This is something you would write in a traditional computer programming language, uh, like C++ or Java or something, um, to get a Boolean value. Max MSP can do the same thing as this, but it's way easier. And the way we do it is sort of with the same objects. We can use greater than or greater than or equal greater than or equal to objects. We could use less than or equal to objects. You don't have to have the equals to, there's just greater than or less than. Um, we also have just equals to, which is two equal signs. And then we also have logical operators, such as a double ampersand for and, and a logical operator for or. Um, more on those in just a second. Let's look at these uh, first guys over here. These are the same, these are our Boolean operators it's the same thing as writing this line of code if we use this with max msp we just need to patch some integers into here to pass through to see what's going on so we'll create one integer box for our right inlet which sets the operand to be greater than or equal to and we'll patch one into the left inlet which is our hot inlet and it will check to see if this value is in fact greater than or equal to this value and we can see the return of whether that is true or false out of the outlet of the object. So I'm going to hit zero. So this is set to zero. And then uh, we're going to actually, let's create a random object. Let's attach to it a button to send it a bang. And we're going to add a plus one to the end of the chain. So um, we have an offset. We actually have to define the number. We're going to do random 100. So this way we will get a random value between one and 100. And since this is set to zero, when I click this button, bam, it is true. 69 is in fact greater than uh, zero. And therefore we got a one. This is the sign that this statement is true. We received a one, therefore it is true. If it wasn't true, we would receive a zero. So let's set this to something that could maybe potentially return a zero. We'll do 50 because we're doing random 100 values and are greater than a boolean operator is set to be greater than or equal to 50 we're going to get about a 50 50 percent chance of this being a one or a zero and i clicked it and we got a zero 39 is not greater than 50 therefore false we got a zero let's try again up oh, 94 94 is greater than 50 therefore we got a one pretty simple and that's how all of these objects work all of these objects work exactly that way and you can also in them set the value So we don't even have to use the integer box We could just hard code this in uh, to be greater than 50 or whatever number you need to set yours to And this is very valuable because this lets us get really complex with a lot of crazy cool ideas We can do with max MSP really the world is your oyster um, One thing we can do is build like a random probability uh, melody sequencer using this concept we could say uh if if our random value is greater than or equal to 50 then uh if that's true we're gonna we know we're gonna get a one so we can send that one to our cell one object which will turn it into a bang we can turn this into another random object which i'm gonna say random 50 this time and we're gonna add an offset of 30 so it'll go between 30 and 50 above 30 which is 80 then that bang will hit that random it will output a random integer which we can see in this integer number box and we can turn that into mini note using our make note note now out combo so we'll uh, do that we'll patch the make note to the note out as we do and we will in these uh, put the velocity and the duration uh, just some random default values for now um, you can get really fancy with how this works if you want. Um, 
but for now we'll just do this so we're going to get this this will be our pitch midi value and now if i click this button and our random value is greater than 50 we will get another random midi note in return okay AI, we got 19 19 is not greater than 50 so we did not get a note hey 73 is greater than 50 therefore we just played a random midi note um and you could like i said you could get really fancy with these things we could uh, start to use these logical operators as well if we wanted to specify an even more specific range. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna copy and paste this over, and we're gonna turn this to a less than uh, 80. So now um, we can get rid of these for a sec. Now our uh, value will check for this range. It will see if this random value is greater than or equal to 50, and it will check if this is less than or equal to 80. But if we want to make sure that we only get that bang when it is in fact, when both of these are true, we're going to have to use this logical and operator, which we can do by patching both of our greater than Boolean or less than Boolean objects into the inlets of the and. So now it will check for sure is this incoming inlet greater than 50 it will check for one to see that that is true and it will check in this inlet to see that this is less than 80 and that is also true and if both of these values now return a one this will also return a one so we can check this let's put some messages box here so we can see the exact output from these boolean and logical objects and let's send a bang and let's see if this worked uh we got a locked patch to click the button click okay so 36 is not greater than 50, therefore this is zero, but it is less than 80, so this returned a one. But because this is not true, and this is patched into our and object, um, it returned a zero, because the and logical operator is checking to make sure both of these are true. It is saying this one is true and this one is true, because this one was not true, this one is also now not true, and we did not get our random note. Let's click the button again and see if anything else happens. Okay, same same thing. 49 is not greater than 50, so this is not true. Therefore, the uh, an operator is not true, and we do not get a note. Okay, different thing happened this time. 82 is greater than 50, but it's not less than 80. So now because this one is true and this one is not true, this is still not true, uh, and it returned a zero. Okay, awesome. We clicked a bang. We got a random value. 54 is greater than 50. Therefore, this one is now true. 54 is also less than 80. So this one is true. And because this one is true and this one is true, this one is also true. It checked to make sure both of those incoming data were true and it was. So it also returned a true value. And we can also, let's, instead of message boxes, let's patch some toggles into here because these toggles do um, basically the same thing. They output a zero or a one if you click on them and will turn off if it receives a zero and a one if it turns on or sorry, <laughs> it'll turn on if it receives a one. So it's a great graphical way of knowing whether um, we are in fact true or false with these Boolean values. So let's let's do this again. Let's click the button. Awesome. 68 is greater than 50. Therefore, it's true. And we saw this toggle light up. 68 is less than 80. So this toggle also lit up. And because both of these are true, this one is also now true. All right. Clicked one again. 18 is not greater than 50. Not true. This one is true. But because these are not both true, this one is also not true. Let's create a metro object and let's set it to 250 and give ourselves some room. And we're going to patch this right into that bang and we're going to patch a toggle into the metro to click it and turn it on and now it is setting out a bang and you see yeah we are in fact getting notes only when the value is in between this range so you can create seat melody we can you can do exactly what we're doing we're creating a melody sequence based on a random probability and it's the probability that this random value is in this range so it's not a very high probability which is why we don't hear notes very frequently um let's look at some other cool examples of what we can do with these boolean objects similarly uh we can create another kind of like uh, melodic sequencer i'm going to start with a counter and we are gonna set this counter to be between one and 50. Um, and we're gonna pass a metro into it. 
So uh, it will receive a bang, which we can see in this button, um, and that will output the next number in the count, which we can then see if we output the counter to an integer box. So let's lock our patch, click the toggle, turn it on, we see it's sending out bangs, and this counter is now counting between one and 50. So we'll let's do something interesting here. We'll say um, if this is greater than, I don't know, uh, 25, that's halfway, greater than, let's do greater than or equal to 25, then give us a random value, just like we were doing before. And I'm just gonna even save time just by copying and pasting this over. And we're gonna change this to, uh, actually we're gonna change, we're gonna leave that, uh, we're gonna change this to 50. So we offset by 50 and we're gonna change this to 70. So we're gonna work in a random range between 50 and 120, which is perfect if we want to continue to use this make note object because that will be our velocity value. Um, we can set that in there. And so now whenever this is greater than 25, we're going to get a new random velocity. Kind of a weird way, but you know what? It's a great example, so we're gonna roll with it. Um, let's do some other things. We need to have a pitch. Let's do that. Um, I'm going to show this other cool object that we can use in this case. It's called a modulo. In fact, I probably should have talked about it when I was talking about mathematical operators, but I feel it's better to understand how modulo works when used in, exam in an example. And modulo is basically a remainder division object, but we can think of it more as a wrapping tool. If we take an integer number and we patch it into our modulo divide, it is going to divide this value by this value and output the remainder, which will create basically a wraparound. This value that comes out of the modulo will never increase above four now because uh, that's basically how modulo is working. Uh, we can get a zero, one, two, or three, but it will never go above four. We could change this to a six or something, and it will wrap around the value of six instead of four. So now we are going from zero to five, which gives us six values, and it's the same kind of concept. Um, so that's cool. This is a great combination. This like counter uh, combo with this modulator combo is a great tool because we can use it to start to do rhythmic sequencing type stuff. Let's set this actually back to four and we'll say uh, if this is equal to zero, then let's get a new random pitch value. So let's take this because this is what we were using for pitch before. We may as well just use it again. And I need a cell one object because this is going to just output a one and the cell is going to turn that one into a bang, which we can use to trigger our random object and patch into this integer pitch. So that way, every time this is now equal to zero, we're gonna get a new note, which is pretty cool. Um, but maybe we want this, oops, I'm just pulling patch cords everywhere. <laughs> maybe we want this to be a little bit more interesting. Uh, maybe we want this to trigger them more than just on the zero. This is where we can use our logical or object. So let's bring this down and we're gonna patch this guy into here and this guy into here. And we're gonna say, if this is equal to zero or I don't know, equal to one, so if either of these are true, then let's, you know, get a new random pitch. And there you go. So now only one of these have to be true for this condition to be satisfied. And that will trigger the bang, which we can hear working. So now every time this is equal to zero or one, then we hear a new random note. And we can honestly extend these logical trees forever just by continuing to chain them together. So if we create another logical or object and we patch that into here, um, we could send another equals to object into the other inlet. So let's say, uh, let's say three this time, that's the max. Um, so if this is equal to zero or equal to one or equal to three, then send out a random object. Um, and that's pretty cool. And I don't honestly, I don't know why we did it this way. I was trying to copy what we were doing over here, but this makes a lot more sense uh, for, for what we're doing as well. So actually we don't even need to copy all of it. Let's just copy the random and we'll send the cell into here and we'll change this random to be uh, what we had set up. So random 70 plus 50 and that can be our new velocity. So now it'll pick a new velocity with every new note. And we can actually see that in the integer box. Um, and that's pretty cool. 
and let's let's get rid of the plus let's just let's just give it a full range it could be totally quiet who cares let's just hear what that sounds like interesting <laughs> But that's it. That's basically logical operators in max MSP. It makes a lot of sense when you just break it down and you try to realize how the signal data flow is going. So to review real quick, let's just check again. If this number that comes out into this integer box that's passed into our Boolean objects, in this example, if this value is greater than or equal to this value, then we're going to get that one. With the less than objects, it's the same thing. It's just checking to see if it's less than. And uh, if this value is less than this set value, it will return a one. The and will check to see if whatever Boolean objects are coming into this are both true. If this is one and this is one, then this will also be one because both of them are true. And similar, same thing, what we're doing over here. We have these equal to objects, so it's checking to see if this integer value is equal to zero. If it is equal to exactly zero and no other value, it will return a one. And then we're just chaining them together using logical or operators to create a rhythmic sequence for our sequencer based on this random probability. Um, well, it's not random, we're using a counter over here, <laughs> sorry. but. Con conceptually that's what's going on we're just chaining these logical or operators together so we're saying if is this value equal to zero or equal to one or equal to three then if so return a one and if it's a one turn that one into a bang here and turn that bang into these random values to be our pitch and velocity for our melodic sequencer it's pretty weird because we're thinking of, of this in like graphical objects. I know with a lot of new students, um, they have struggled to kind of see how these patch chords flow. But if you just break it down real slowly and just think about this, it's pretty helpful because it's just the same thing. All you're doing is saying is if this X value, our integer value, if our integer value is greater than or equal to whatever value is set for the Boolean, 50, whatever it is, then, which is this curly bracket, then return a true or a false, which is just a one or a zero. That's it. Nothing complicated. So I hope this explanation makes sense. I hope these examples make sense. Um, we're going to see some really cool ways we can use everything we've talked about so far to really expand out more as we start to now break into the audio and soon the visual sections of this beginner intro series so i hope you stick along for that journey if you guys have any questions please leave them in the comments down below if you found this video helpful if you learned something you didn't know please like and subscribe because that lets me know i'm doing a good job and you guys do in fact find these helpful and i, I honestly appreciate that so much if you want to do any extra learning or you just want to support me as an artist and help you know, help support me do what I do. Um, I have a Patreon and I would really appreciate y'all checking that out and consider it subscribing there. Um, we're going to do extra learning stuff. I post uh, all my tutorials there. Um, so you can just download these patches and I try to annotate them. So they're a little bit cleaner and make sense on their own. If you didn't watch the video or you just want to go back and reference those patches. So that's, that's what's going on. That's what's up. Here's where we're at. I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoy this and I will see you in the next video.